Amazing. Welcome, welcome to my dear friend, Diana Cooper. It's so wonderful to have you on the show again, honey. Thank you for being here. It's lovely to see you again, Alexandra. And you look so bright and springtimey. And I think that you're actually matching some of the colours of your new book and Oracle, which I've very kindly been sent uh, by Hay House today. Um, They arrived yesterday, but I've had a play with the cards and I've had a look through and it just looks so comprehensive and so needed right now. Um, I think the timing of these couldn't come better. And I, and I just want to start by talking a little bit about what we're going through right now. I mean, obviously, yeah. we're in a massive, massive transition. And what a time to be on the earth. I listened to another interview with you, I think a couple of days ago around this. And I loved the analogy you used about it being like a kitchen remodeling. And when you oh, yes, yes, yes. the kitchen, <laughs> yeah. and then you're in like all the mess and the muck, and you know, you might be finding hidden things like rats lurking in the corners and all of that. And I feel like I we're in that, that bit. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're just coming out of that bit now. Maybe we've got a few cupboards in place, but what yeah. what's your advice for people at the moment who are who are kind of witnessing this sort of remodeling and exactly and re- what you're saying and that is think about the kitchen being completed and what it's going to be like we are moving into this amazing golden future so if you ever hear anyone say oh poor kids what a life we're leaving them no no we're moving into something that's extraordinary and unique and hasn't been on earth before Because even in the 1500 years of Atlantis, we are now moving into a higher frequency than they were because they were fifth dimensional on a third dimensional planet. We're going to be fifth dimensional on a fifth dimensional planet. So we have all that support coming in for us. And if we focus on the future that's coming in, then we, we create it. We're co-creators. Now, I did an event last year in October where we merged with our monad. And on that day, 90,000 people merged with their monads. And 60,000 of them were directly as a result of the event. And since then, there's been another 10,000. So that's 100,000 people merged with their monad. Absolutely amazing. And since that time, there's been a... 60% 60% rise in the frequency on the planet. I mean, can you believe it? This is why people keep saying, what's going on? We're feeling like something's happening. And everywhere people are aware that there is a frequency shift. Doesn't mean to say it's easy to deal with. We have to deal with it in our physical bodies, in our lives, everywhere. But it is making such a difference. of the planet are now fifth dimensional. It's incredible, isn't it? We are way ahead of time from what what we were destined or designed to be. Humanity has really taken it on board. And we've asked for so much help and received so much help from the rest of the universe that we are racing ahead. And I, I just think that it's so incredibly exciting what's going on. Every day I wake up and think, well, what magic is happening now? That's but- <laughs> the, the thing about the, the – we're getting evidence of it now, and I think definitely since 2024 began. And even if that evidence is just a slight shift in your feeling or your focus or your perception, um, but I'm feeling evidence of it now. You know, those moments where – it is really embodied. It is. It feels very 5D and 3D. You know, you can just be with a like-minded group of people having dinner and you'll catch yourself going, oh, this is it. This is heaven on earth. This is the evidence. You know, the fact that we can just sit and have these conversations is evidence. But I want to ask you, like, what's some of the best evidence that you've personally had that this is this is shifting and this is changing and, and we are moving in the right direction? Well, it, this is probably not the same evidence that everybody else gets, but what happens for me is that I talk to my guides and I get told what's going on on the planet. You know, in October, when we did that event, we established a connection with Andromeda and the codes of rejuvenation, a connection with 
Helios and the codes of regeneration, a connection with Jupiter and bringing in the 10th dimensional abundance consciousness and also activating our fifth dimensional health blueprints. Now, in the 1st of January, those could be activated. So for the first time, we're able to activate these energies in our physical bodies and make things happen because now we are preparing for our crystalline light bodies. I mean, five years ago, nobody was even thinking about such a thing. And now people are actively preparing, doing meditations to really bring this energy through and shift their bodies. And we will be moving into that energy. Well, everybody will have the opportunity pretty soon to make those changes. It's so beautiful. What I, one of the things I'm bearing witness to as well, and I'm bearing witness to it between you and I here now, is this unspoken um, frequency that moves between us and what we're embodying and the codes that we're bringing through and you can absolutely feel it like an energy exchange and I and you know my guides were telling me you know for years they've been saying there'll be a time where healing just happens by osmosis where you just sit in each other's presence and you don't really need to even discuss anything it, it will just be embodied and very telepathic and I can definitely say I'm feeling it between us now. There's this beautiful flow of energy, as there always is, but it, it it's much more tangible now, I find. Well, it's not just healing. It's everything. If you've got, say, your 12 strands of DNA or some of them activated, then you're passing that on to other people when you're with them. And this is how we're all shifting so rapidly, so quickly, what's going on right now. It's and I, having so said, I think everybody's talking about it, but this year is going to be quite a tricky year because mm -hmm. things are happening so fast. You know, we're still seeing the destruction of the kitchen and all those units coming up. Well, I think it's going to be the, the last bit of that this year, but it's going to mean that there's a lot of disruption on the planet. I know everyone is talking about April being a, a very, very tricky month when there's going to be so much happening, so much emerging that was hidden before and is now at last being, being revealed. So many challenges. You mentioned Pam, the astrologer, Pam Gregory, and she says that it's the exact same astrological configuration as there was during the peasant revolt in France hundreds of years ago when they actually stormed the Bastille and the royal family either escaped or was killed. And it's exactly the same configuration now. So and we're likely to see some uprisings potentially. Population absolutely has had enough. The yeah. consciousness is now starting to say, we want fairness, we want equality, we want justice. And we are going to get it and push that out into the world because the navel chakra is coming in. And so as the navel chakra gets more strong within us, we're automatically going to expect fairness and oneness and equality. And get it, we will. And there are other ways to do it too, isn't there? You know, it is really the end of that hierarchical top-down structure <clears throat> there's a fantastic meme I've seen a few times of like all these like old men kind of sitting around like a chessboard and the table that the chessboard is on is on the backs of all the people and it says in order to make change all we have to do is stand up and it's so <laughs> okay and, um, you know we're seeing it now like yeah. you know people kind of segueing yeah. out of like the corporate structures for years and years and like younger entrepreneurs and people making yeah. their own business. Mm -hmm. But I'm also seeing now there's this beautiful bridging of worlds happening, like the integration is 12, 12 on my clock as I talk about it, but the integration where some of us are going kind of back into those systems, but bringing masses of light. So they have to change from the inside out, don't they? You yeah. know, it's not just about breaking away from the old, it's about, mm -hmm heaven on earth really isn't it well all the pyramid structures all the third dimensional structures are going to be swept away in the rising tide of consciousness 
And this is happening very quickly now. It's really beautiful. And I made a video the other day on, on my YouTube about how the elder wisdom is really, really coming back, back to life yeah. and back to life. You've been such a pioneer for this, Diana. Um, I want to ask you, there's been a question <clears throat> kicking around this morning about, you know, and I had an interesting, I had an interesting email exchange with another woman who's another author, but who's previously been quite academic around kind of academia. My throat's going, <clears throat> by the way, as I start talking about this, but around sort of the question of credibility and, and things like that. And having worked in kind of the esoteric and the spiritual realms for so long, hmm. how have you found people who've kind of, have people questioned your credibility and how you know what you know and, and how have you coped with that? Because obviously you write about angels and unicorns much like I do. Um, how, did, how, did, how have you dealt with that and what's going to happen with this in the future? Well, I haven't dealt with it. In, it has not impacted on me in any way whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And so if somebody says, oh, I don't believe in angels, da, 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 I just, that's absolutely fine. You know, that's nothing to do with me whatsoever. That's your beliefs. Mm -hmm. And so I really, I don't see Facebook or anything like that. And so I don't go on social media. So I have got no idea what people are saying. I just carry on spreading what I'm given to say. Yeah, I love that. It's so beautiful. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm, you know, <laughs> nothing to do with me. Okay, so you don't believe in the world changing and transforming. You don't believe in climate change. Well, it's fine. That's your beliefs. Yeah, it's the best way to be, really. I used to have people challenge me on it all the time, and then I got it as well. And I'd be like, well, you know, if you want evidence, go ask for your own evidence. It's not my job to bring it to you. you Absolutely. Know? No, That's no. That's a big part of it. It's not um, my job to give anyone evidence at all. Yes, yeah. to live my truth and you know so much more is imparted to other people not by what you say but you know this but the energy that you're giving out mm -hmm. so we're constantly changing other people just with our energy yeah one of the things I love about you is that you absolutely embody everything that you teach and you just stand in your truth and stand in your power and that's something I've always really honoured about you. And I think that makes you such a, just a wonderful example in the world. And well, thank you. I have been at it a long time. <laughs> I know you have. I know you have. You're the master. Um, I want, there's a question that, that, that the guides are feeding into me. Now, this has been on my mind a lot. And I do, I've been doing my own work around this topic for a long, long time. And it's the topic of the AI. But more specifically, I noticed in your card deck, that there's a card that talks about the robots. Now, last week, I was talking to a friend of mine who actually works in corporate branding. And she's been like, what's the AI question? What does it mean? You know, and then she showed me all these articles about actual robots in the Amazon warehouses, they're starting to come in, we're seeing them, we know from cinema and film that there's a lot of fear around these robots but they I know that they could also make life easier for people so can you tell us about what's coming through for robots and where we're heading for the future of AI I think that it depends what's for the highest good in the future only things that are fifth dimensional and therefore the highest good will be developed so we'll have robots for helping to do the washing up to program your house, to help deliver things, all of that sort of thing. We will use the best of it, the best of the new technology coming in and all the rest, like the web, all, all the information on the internet, all the wavelengths. We will move to the higher wavelengths, but those lower ones, the low frequency ones we've got at the moment, just simply won't be used anymore. So everything will be for whatever is for the highest good of all. Wow. So it's all AI, AI it's yeah. the same with robots. Yeah. yeah. We have to put our trust on that really big time and just transcend the lower, the lower kind of frequency stuff that's been put. An out. automatic thing that will happen. Because if people are fifth dimensional, why do they want any third dimensional stuff? If we're all in oneness then why do we want anything that would harm anybody else? Yeah. Of course, it's just not going to work like that. What we forget is we're looking at it with the eyes of people now, 
In fact, the future is going to be something beyond anything we can truly comprehend. Because it's coming in fast. <laughs> much faster. Yeah, it, it's changing very rapidly. Already we're seeing it. But we're still... Well, you know, imagine having, you know, robots do all your cooking, all your cleaning, everything, and you're free to just go for a nice walk in the woods. I mean, what what's not to well, love? <laughs> actually, it's something more than that. Because the people in the future, as their consciousness changes, they're becoming more friendly, more welcoming, more sociable than we are now. We're not going to have units of one person living here, one person living there. Or if they are, they're going to have a communal area where everybody meets and joins together. So it won't be the robots doing that. It'll be everybody, sh the robots doing what we want them to do. And then people gather together and they chat and do jobs that they want to do. Or they do something constructive together or something creative together. There's much, much more togetherness. People joining together, going out to the park and all singing together, painting together. It's mm. not like nowadays. You know, if you see a group of people and they're playing a sport, you don't think you can go and join them. But when the consciousness changes, it's a group of people playing sport, you're welcome. But furthermore, you feel welcome. Yeah. And so you can do anything together. It, it, I find it a most miraculous concept. Loneliness is completely gone because that's a third dimensional concept. Everyone is wanted. Everyone is welcome. Everyone can join in and you feel it. And that's beautiful. And it does feel unfathomable that we're ever going to get there at a time when, you know, there's so much suspicion and stuff hanging around this uh, in, in this period, isn't there? And rising above that, transmuting that. But it is happening more and more rapidly. And I feel like um, our emotional bodies are so activated at the moment. I feel like a lot of the unhealed emotions collectively and a lot of us that are doing this work I think are feeling for the collective and, and helping to clear for the collective but the emotional body is really needing some tender love and care at the moment I think that's what's going to move us through really rapidly isn't it just well, really honoring how we feel it's quite interesting that you're saying this because I uh, the aim is to keep the emotional mental physical and spiritual bodies 25% each so that we're totally in balance. Yeah. And if your emotional body's out, then something else is obviously out too. Well, my my five, four were in total balance. And then, then I decided that I need to, to do a bit more of my physical body and I managed to strain my Achilles tendon and all sorts of things. That resulted in the other bodies going out as well. And so I had this conversation with my guide and he said that the reason that I kept my emotional body balanced before wasn't because I'd gone into feeling emotions and things. It was because instead of listening to left brain things, I had listened to right brain novels, things that were easy to digest. And that had enabled my emotional body to come into balance with my mental body and bring everything back into balance again. And I thought, well, how simple is that? Because when I was listening to those through my right brain, I wasn't thinking with my left brain because I would normally and naturally be much more mental <laughs> and the emotional less. But that was how I'd kept it into ba in balance. And you I was literally just confirmed something for me because I've been dealing with my own um, at being a Libra and my own uh, tendency to overthink for the last few years. And one of the ways I've been healing that is listening to audiobooks. Yes, so that's what you, yeah, it's absolutely listening yeah. rather than reading also, yeah. also opens the right brain more. Yeah, absolutely. So I love that. For me, it was a revelation. It probably isn't a revelation for you, but I just thought, yes. In yeah. fact, I phoned somebody I know who's also very mental and and has had a lot of physical problems. And I told him this and said that, and I spoke to my guide and he said if he listened to audible type books 
instead of thinking and listening to work type podcasts, he would come into balance and then everything in his life would come into balance. This is the thing when we're in balance. I know, and novels take you off into the imaginarium, don't they? They give the logical brain a rest, and I think that is the simplest way to deal with it. I I'm, I'm, I think so many people, we get caught in scroll hole. Well, I mean, you don't, but you get caught in a scroll hole on Instagram or something, and it makes you, you know, your, the unworthiness kicks in, the imposter syndrome, uh, things like that, and then you're like, oh. And the best way is just to take yourself away, have a digital detox and, you know, and I love listening to a magical novel or something. It, it's a beautiful way to deal with it. And, and I, I love think it, it was a waste of time, you see. I know, me too. Like it's like I'm not being practical. I'm not <laughs> getting it right. done. <laughs> it's wonderful. It is wonderful. I think we can be – I definitely have the p- perfectionism um aspect and I think you're Virgo aren't you yeah and I'm Libra but I'm very close to Virgo so I think we can be really hard on ourselves and go I need to be getting things done what do I what am I doing um and I love that you mentioned the body as well my next question was going to be about the body because obviously our 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 physical bodies are going through huge upgrades at the moment aren't they can can you talk a little bit about what's happening to the body as we move into this future well that's also another interesting question because we started to connect with Pluto as you know, Pluto's just come in. And well, I had a fascinating experience because after my guide had told me that we must connect with Pluto every day. So when I do my morning meditation, I add Pluto to it. And about a week after that, I woke up in the middle of the night with this surgeon there standing in front of me and wearing surgeon's uniforms. And then he disappeared. And I I said to my guide when I came fully to, well, was he giving me... Um, psychic surgery and he said no no he gave your full body cellular upgrade that's what starts happening with pluto in fact uh, i'm just going to do a a whole um workshop about it but uh, a few days later i just sat on the sofa in the middle of the day and i found myself in pluto and i was taken up because The new energies that Pluto brings in is they take you to a place where your frequency can be higher. You move into higher frequencies. But I moved into this chamber and I've never seen light like it. I mean, never. And Raphael was in there, Mary, the Christ light and Jophiel, Archangel Jophiel. And uh, he then said to me that I I was to take people to Pluto into that tent into that particular chamber for healing for full body cellular upgrades at a 10th dimensional frequency and there would be a team of masters waiting there to do it and I thought wow that's awesome that's amazing and that's what's happening and after that the next experience I had was when they took me in for cleansing into the next chamber of Pluto so what I'm saying is that everybody's having these opportunities now to clear because we're preparing to activate our crystalline light bodies and to prepare our fifth dimensional health blueprints and for the 12 strands of DNA to come in. So there's massive opportunities in the cellular body for change because the people of the golden future that we are now preparing for are going to be taller and thinner and healthier and very different. And the crystalline body and brain is not that it's hard like a crystal, as you know, it's that it's the atoms are are arranged according to sacred geometry Mm -hmm. so that you've got the qualities of a crystal and that you radiate that out. And for example, the crystalline brain is like a computer. You've got massive memory, massive things that you can do that we currently can't do. And I think people are undergoing a shift as this is starting to happen. It's huge. I find some of the, I do a lot of work on kind of balancing this out, anchoring the masses of light coming Mm -hmm. in um, Mm -hmm. and helping us to ground them with all the disruption Mm -hmm. and finding that one of the things people are experiencing, this is just through kind of my own experience, but also my clients, is huge amounts of kind of disorientation, almost floatiness, feeling that 
re- like almost like is this real like the feeling like reality is having a huge shift and sometimes feeling a little bit um but lost and confused like some of the things that people are saying is well I think a lot of soul contracts are changing as well in this upgrade so people coming to me kind of going I just feel like I've lost my direction and I don't know which way I'm going and I'm having to say to them well it's because your ego is not leading anymore your soul's leading and we need to do some work to integrate that but from your experience how are you finding it like what 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 advice would you give people to sort of help to ground these massive frequencies coming in well obviously walking is the thing to do do as much walking as you can and remember that as soon as your earth star chakra is fully in then that automatically takes you to live in a place where you are meant to be living and then that again automatically starts to draw your soul family there Mm -hmm. so people are connecting with their soul families and living in the right place and then awful lot of people are saying I feel I ought to go and live in France or I feel I ought to go and live in Portugal or somewhere like that because they're being drawn there now by their earth star chakra and of course the navel then coming in enables the families the communities to actually draw together and it's how the fifth dimensional communities of the future will be attracted so that we'll be living with our soul family and soul friends people on the same wavelength as we are so it's a much more contented way of living than with people from other wavelengths and other ideas and they'll be together so they'll be contented and happy too there's also a opening different levels of communication i mean we mentioned a little bit of telepathy and things like that Mm. and um, i mean obviously before we started the interview we were talking about our animals and how they're they're being impacted but i'm finding that my cat jezebel it's it's so easy to understand what she's saying to me and she's almost speaking english now like (laughs) it's actually so gorgeous and a bit ridiculous and she's like looking at me like well, of course you know what I'm saying. Come on, let's go yeah. do this. So, okay. Um, what other kind of ways do you think we're we're able to communicate in in the golden future? Well, when our 12 strands of DNA are in, of course, all our gifts and talents come back. So we'll all be clairvoyant. And that means that we'll all see auras. That means that nobody can hide anything because you can't hide anything if your energy fields are out there that means that everyone has to be totally honest. We will be connecting heart to heart. Huge, everything will be done with massive open hearts. For example, if you want to take decisions, you'll sit down together and you'll connect heart to heart and you'll then affirm that you're taking a decision for the highest good of all. And so decisions will be made easily and quickly because you're all attuned together. We'll be doing much, much more attunement. Families will be attuned to each other so that they will be much happier. The sacral chakra is rising in frequency. So relationships will not so much be physically based, but will be based on true love. So the first time for years or since Atlantis, people will be able to experience true love in relationships. This means that the whole family will be much more contented, much happier, because they'll all be living on a wavelength in love for the highest good of all. I mean, we can't actually imagine these things at the moment because there's still so much ego, which is another interesting point because recently I was told that we could have two more masters come in with us every day because I do the monadic merge meditation every day. And we've had lots and lots of upgrades. And so recently when I was told that, they said, which masters would you like? And I said, Lady Nada, because she has no ego, I'd like help to dissolve ego. And they said, okay, well, Lady Nada will place a six-pointed star in magenta in your third eye every morning if you ask, and that will dissolve your ego. Wow. I thought, wow. (laughs) Wouldn't miss a, a second of asking for that. And I also asked for Jesus to come in because, as you know, he's the bringer of love now. And I asked for him to come in and add love to my thoughts, words and deeds all through the day. 
And so now there are seven masters. And obviously, I, I pass this on to others on my YouTube channel, and I put up the upgraded versions of the monadic merge. We can, we can share the links below this interview too. I'll link back to your channel for people as well. And so all they're all on there so that people can do those merges. They can we can now um connect with Pluto and move into higher frequencies, and that's a silver platinum energy. We can bring in the energy from the Pleiades. Now we've always been able to do that, but now we can do this directly and are asked to do it directly to bring in source healing and just bring that the codes into our bodies. And the other one is um, Arcturus. And uh, that's a beautiful, it's orange gold as opposed to gold orange that we've been working with. So it's a bright orange gold and it's bringing in the light codes of mastery. So it's amazing. We can bring in those energies every day. I can feel that these would be good, really good as well for people, for those of you watching, if you feel like you've had any resistance to these shifts and changes. I know that sometimes our subconscious can, our ego can go through sort of fears as we go through upgrades. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, done, I've done it myself. I'm always looking at, oh, God, where am I resisting this? And, we, you know, like as Marianne Williamson said, we're often frightened of our own power, aren't we? You know, as we yeah, integrate indeed. our shadow. Indeed. Yeah. But that's happening less and less now as more people are are ready to stand in their true selves, to be who they truly are. I mean, the one I love most is El Moira. And what I was told before Portugal was that we could ask him to come and enter our physical body and transfer and transfer the keys and codes of the 12 strands of DNA of the goal of the being of the golden future directly into us. Wow. I had that happen uh, at exactly as you've just described it. In 2017, I woke up in the middle of the night with El Moria literally in my energy field. I could see this purple turban. Mm -hmm. My arms and legs were out straight and I started gabbling away in light language I had light coming out my eyes my mouth my hands my husband at that point hadn't actually seen me speak in light language so he he works in recruitment he's bless him he had he started to know who he is he's found healing energy in his hands and he's having his own journey but at that time he was like oh my god my wife's <laughs> possessed <laughs> So he wakes up and he shoots out of bed. He ran out into the hallway thinking I was completely possessed. And then I sat up in bed and I kind of came to and I got all the information about what had happened. And it was absolutely stunning, the frequency of it. And he came back into the room and, and he just looks at me and I was like, you okay, babe? <laughs> and he was like, no, are you possessed? <laughs> and I was like, no, it was light. It was all light and it was all good, but... After that, he was like, okay, talk to me more about this light language and what it does. It was hilarious, but I love that you've just confirmed that. Like, it was so clear and vivid and, and powerful. But and it also, it can so... be frightening for people. And I expect you also find that your dog tells you or your cat tells you when somebody is around before you know yourself. Oh, my God, completely, yeah. And she wants to be in on every healing, ses healing okay. session I'm doing. You know, she sits at the door and she makes me let her in. And most people love it, though. They 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 know that she's helping out, as I'm sure you do with the dogs. Yeah. Oh, they do everything well. Many years ago, Venus, my special, special papillon Jack Russell, I mean, she's absolutely gorgeous. And this must have been about six or seven years ago. And we had a healing circle in the house. And it was a, a big room in, in an old house of mine in a big room. And we had two ca two crystals in it. And the aim was that people lay between the crystals so that their feet were on one crystal and their head was touching the other. And the first volunteer was a child. And out of nowhere, didn't reach the crystals, of course, out of nowhere, Venus arrived, stretched herself out between the top of his head and the other crystal. Everyone went, oh, <laughs> She's amazing. It was extraordinary. She was a temple dog yeah. and she knew exactly what to do. Wow. Oh, wow. And as you're speaking, I've got Anubis coming in really, really clear, really strong here. Um, 
And he's actually saying there's something coming through about the actual, the dissolving of the underworld and there won't be a need for us to actually go through such deep initiations as we come into this new future. We really are transcending the light and dark, aren't we? You know, it's Well, it's very interesting you say that because on New Year's Eve, I was talking to a friend on the phone and we were talking about the astral realms and the fact that there was so much dark energy coming in from the universe into Earth through the astral gates. And um, she phoned me back and I said, we said, well, look, let's do something about it. Uh, I said, but not now, it's New Year's Eve. She phoned me back two minutes later and said, we've got to do it now this minute. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Put the phone down and we both tuned in and it was actually quite a lot of effort. We got those gates closed and the sentinels of Anubis on duty. And we told it they're totally closed that dark energy can no longer penetrate from outside mm -hmm. means we still can clear the stuff inside but even that is beginning to shift now and we had to do it suddenly and quickly like that so that it wouldn't alert any forces to try and block the energy that was stopping it and then after soon after that i was told because i had uh, been to the intergalactic council and i'd asked if we could bring the pure white flame of Atlantis, which is the greatest purifying flame over the entire planet. Mm. And first of all, they said, well, hang on, we, we have to check it out with the other councils. And so each day I had to go back and just while they were checking the other councils, because it would affect the entire universe, not just Earth. And so we received permission for the pure white flame of Atlantis to go around the entire planet. And now it's 10,000 miles around the planet in all directions. So it's purifying the aura of Earth all the time. And yeah. that's, that's really making a difference. Yeah. And um, also, apparently, a whole lot of people died during COVID. And when they passed over, they realized how, much, how they'd been lied to. And yeah. many of them were very near ascension. And uh, so they... They were stuck because of their anger. And we were told to put the flame of, of source truth at the gates of heaven. I said, do you mean the seventh dimension? They said, no, we mean the gates of heaven. And the flame of source truth there with rows of angels coming in and then the archangels would go in and collect them. And again, I said, the particular archangel said, no. Every single archangel is on duty and volunteering to do that. So they all are going in and it's still taking place. So now I'm asking for many, many more angels to come in and help those who are not that far advanced in the inner planes who are stuck in the astral to help them over as well. Beautiful. Yeah, my guides have said to me, and a lot of the kind of work that I do is moving people through to a higher plane so they don't get stuck in that astral plane. Mm -hmm. um, and they've said that what we're what we're doing is actually dissolving that reincarnation loop so we, we won't need to reincarnate and that's all part of the um, quite the distortion because it, it happens because people forget that they're already divinely perfect and then they forget that they can go home to their own soul and a lot of souls and high-level souls have been kind of trapped here going round and around and around. So... I think what's happening as well is, and I've kind of seen evidence of this, is we are actually eventually dissolving that astral plane and it, it won't be needed anymore at all, will it? So I understand the astral plane will be gone in about three years. Yeah, it's quick. So it's quick. I don't know if the work that we did will bring that forward and that will make a big difference. You know, if you don't have to go through clouds of emotional energy, it will make a big difference to everybody's life. Yeah, it won't allow us to be so easily manipulated as well through the, through our astral body, um, and that need for that will be gone as well. And interestingly, that leads me on to my next question: um, governments and politics and things like that. How are you seeing this shifting as we go forward? Because there's a lot of shadow rising through that <laughs> <laughs> there at the moment. <laughs> well, isn't there? Um, well, as I see it, that. The whole structure is disappearing. For a start, for many, many years, they've all tried to get bigger and bigger and bigger and grab a lot of power. Well, the future is about small and local. 
So I think that a lot, a lot of people, including my guide, believe that Texas will break away pretty soon. Wow. And yeah, and then other states will follow, and then states in Europe will also start going back into smaller units, smaller self-governing units, so that the whole world will then start being um, governed by local people with the interests at heart of the local people. So it's it's not going to be like it is now. We're coming See, back into tribes, aren't we, really? Like well, heart tribes. Well, soul tribes, yes. Soul tribes, yeah. not, not, we think of tribes as being kind of um, primitive. In actual fact, it's going to be highly evolved, but not with complicated technology like there is now. The simplicity of very high frequency of everybody doing what's right for everybody so if you want to build a house instead of saying oh i need planning permission for a house i've got to go through all that no no what is for the highest good in this area and that's where the house will be and people will join together to create that house but it won't be built brick upon brick like it is now we will have techniques to make it happen quickly. The new technology will make the magic happen. And of course, the houses will all be built in divine feminine principles. So there won't be corners. Everything will be circular and um, flowing because that is the energy that we're moving into balance. But if you've got corners, as you know, then you get energy stuck in those corners. Whereas if everything flows, it can be a much higher frequency and there'll be much more water. Everybody will have water features where in the water, of course, the Christ light flows. And so there'll be much more of that energy too. I love that. Uh, you, it's um, We're already seeing some evidence of this though. Like you, it's easier, like there's like kit homes and things that are easier to install. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. And communities rising on the planet already doing this. Yeah. So I love that we're already seeing this. This it gives you hope and it makes you realise how fast it's happening, which is fantastic. Absolutely. Now, moving on to travel, because obviously my inner gypsy, you know, in the pandemic was having a freak out that <laughs> um, I couldn't I'm travel and I managed to. <laughs> I was like, guys, this is not happening. You need to get me travelling. And I managed to get to Spain and I managed to get to Australia through massive lockdown. I mean, amazing restrictions. And I was like, because I'm a grid worker, I need to be on the move. Um, well, I don't, I can do it remotely, but obviously it's nice to be on the move. Um, but where do you see, I, I heard the other day that they're going to be bringing back uh, supersonic travel. So that's exciting, like the Concorde. But where do you see travel going? What's happening? What's happening as we come into this future? For a start, I don't think we'll have individual cars. There will be absolutely no need for it because in the fifth dimensional consciousness, as soon as you need something, it's there. So if you need to travel somewhere, you go to your front door and a car has appeared for you. You see, well, we don't have that consciousness right now. Um, it'll be driverless cars, of course. And so you just, uh, if somebody needs a driver because they feel comfortable, then a car with a volunteer driver will be there for you. But if you don't, then a driverless car will be there for you. There'll be much more of the layered traveling, I think, so that people can um, travel locally in a car that comes for them. And of course, it'll be eco power, free eco power, which mm. is what the big shift that will take place, because that will massively help the pollution on the planet as well. And so it'll be, uh, but we can't have the free eco power until we have the consciousness for it. And that is being worked on now. And so we will bring that consciousness forward so that we can do everything freely and easily, which will be amazing and wonderful and not harm the earth in any way, shape or form. And um, then I see us being able to travel in layers. Huge, I, I talk all about this in the Golden Future book, of course, um, huge kind of spacecraft type vehicles to take us from here to Australia. Um, <laughs> very quickly, very silently, and without any pollution whatsoever. So people will travel much, much more once we move, especially by the time we get to 2050 or so. People will be able to travel everywhere. Um, no passports, no boundaries, not needed. 
mm. because everybody will honor and respect each other and so do what's right. Yes. And I I love what I love is one of the things that Kumakar said. He said that in Australia they'll start a replanting, a tree planting um program, and the deserts will become covered in trees. This will change the climate and make the climate much softer. That will affect the people and make the people much gentler and softer. And I thought, yes, it's amazing how the whole world is changing like that. And okay. that's already happening, Diana. I was at Uluru in uh, December, just gone. Yes. It's so green. I've never seen anything like it. I mean, it's the, it's a living desert anyway, but as we flew mm -hmm. over it, they'd had a lot of rain. Um, a lot more than usual, and it was so green. There were green trees everywhere, and a lot of the waterholes were full, and it was so beautiful. I was singing at a, a waterhole. It was a beautiful, beautiful energy. So I can definitely say there's been already evidence of that. So that is that's, that's brilliant. That's really gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Well, it yeah. is going to happen. It is going to happen. It It is happening, and I think the more that we ask to see evidence of it, we will i think one of the things for the viewers is to say you know like guides teams show me the evidence of this because it, it helps us to then put out change our perception doesn't it put our focus on it and mm. help us to co-create it even more oh, um, absolutely. i'm just going to come to the book for a minute because i just think it's fantastic and i'm i mean I, it only arrived for me yesterday so i'll admit i haven't delved fully into it yet but i have having a flick through it looks like a really, really good comprehensive handbook. So can you just talk us through the book a little bit and and kind of what people can expect from it? Because it's well, such a beautiful cover as well. Yeah, it is. It's lovely, isn't it? I wanted it to be gold. I mean, the first half is a little bit about how we got to this point. Then it's about what's going to happen between now and 2032. And then what happens then and what it will be like in the actual golden future in the new age. And then the last bit is a few very, very high frequency energies that we can call on in order to live in the golden future and help ourselves move into it very quickly. I love it. And it's jam packed with exercises and processes. Yes. That's my yes. kind of book. I think practical books where you actually, you can feel empowered and, and go through processes to embody it. It, it really, really helps. That's amazing. Um, and the other thing I was going to ask you about is some um, kind of rejuvenation, like the kind of beauty, youth, longevity programs. Do you think people are going to be living to older age? Yes, much older yeah. age. Yeah. yeah. Very much so. And um, there won't be the need. People will come in. They won't go through. The, the, they won't have the veils of illusion. The veils of amnesia they'll still go through so they won't remember who they are, but they won't have all the veils that block us from seeing the truth remembering and really and truly i think that we are living at the the best time that's ever been in the history of the planet the i really, really agree time. i think we're so lucky we're so blessed and there's so many of us that have kind of known this and been and been doing this work and kind of now it's like we're all stepping out we're all meeting each other we're all having this this beautiful combined remembrance and it's interesting how many channels are bringing through really similar information as well oh, yeah That's yeah yeah evidence. this is what's happening <laughs> so everyone's bringing the same thing in everyone's yeah. seeing it can i ask could we pull a card from the deck as well do you mind if i pull a card for us and or you could pull oh. a card for us and here we are i actually pulled one before i came on and it was the very <laughs> first one in the deck it was population seize your opportunities which I thought was very interesting. And that's about Lady Gaia giving you an invitation to the planet. Here we are. Let's just yeah, open it up. family relationships. I mean, the cards are stunning. Daniel of, of Space Before Thought, who did them. I mean, just extraordinary. Here's relationships. Just look oh, at the that's card. perfect. And this is about everyone coming together in love with your right soul family and how happy it is, how joyful. Now, everything is full of colour and expectation. And just remember the love in your heart. Oh, once I start, I have to have <laughs> see what else there is. Keep going. <laughs> Tune into the natural world 
just look at the colour in that there. You've got a, a majestic swan coming oh, wow. through and all the colours, and it's telling us, reminding us to look after nature, how important it is, what it can do for us. You know, um, this is one, education, expand your right brain activity. When you look at the cards, there's so much there. You can't even see it all on the screen. He's got the light bulb moment. He's got the 12 strands of DNA, everything, these children. And this um, makes me think of as well, like mm. some of, you know, for people in the 3D who are really worried about things like 5G and dirty tech and all that stuff who, who, who worry about that, I can actually see where that is actually part of our evolution. It's forcing us to speed up our thinking and our processing and our mind. Exactly. It's yeah. kind of forcing our bodies to evolve as well. We have to evolve to to deal with these frequencies coming. Well, in. yes and no. I've just recently been talking to my guides about this because they said the next most important thing is the pollution. Mm. We really have to clear it. But so what I asked was what elementals, what masters, what angels, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, could can clear the soil, the air, and the waters. And so they've given me a whole list of elementals that can consume. You know, we have elementals that have come in. I wrote about this about 10 years ago that have come in from another universe and they can literally consume the plastics and things in the ocean. That's right. I was talking to Pam Gregory about this one as well and because um, I did the, the water deck. And I kept channeling um, information about, I kept seeing what I thought was a molecule or something that could eat plastic. And then she confirmed that by saying, yes, there's actually, I think it's a fungus or something, isn't it, that just literally devours it. It's well, there were, um, they're called Kai Hills, and they are mm -hmm. elementals that were invited here. Mm -hmm. Those are the water ones. And they can literally eat up the pollution. And they came here as a result of an invitation that we sent out. And they uh, and they're taking that energy of Earth back to their home planet. And we are what what they suggested was that we now go to the Intergalactic Council and ask for more and more of them to come in to really help clear the oceans. But then you've got the water dragons. There's a whole host of beings that can help to clear the water, the air and the soil. Mm -hmm. And as we start to bring them in, then we will have that pure energy that we need again. Then the food will be pure. Mm -hmm. Then we'll be able to maintain our health better because we'll have pure organic food again in the new golden age, of course. There'll be new production methods that we have even got no idea of now. And I think this is the biggest thing, and a lot of people have said this, if they've read the book, that they are seeing the world from our current perspective. Actually, it takes you to see the world from where it's going to be, which is just so terribly different. But how wonderful that, you know, we can bring it in we can imagine it now and then we just help to anchor it in we help to bring mm. it to bear and we speed it up you know and 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 also my guides have said we're leaps and bounds ahead of where we where we thought we were going to be already so it's we're 37 percent ahead amazing so... yesterday i was given that yeah <laughs> yeah love it <laughs> the percentage i absolutely love that i know i always ask for the percentages <laughs> around this one being a virgo you know it's like... no 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 i have to have it all i just the whole book is like yeah okay <laughs> this, this is happening and that's happening this is what we're going to... i love it i love it diana it's such a pleasure to speak to you as always i know you've got another interview after me yeah. now today so i'm going to let you go thank you for giving us so much of your time and as always, so so honoured, so grateful, absolutely beautiful. Can't wait to speak to you again next time. And um, have a beautiful day, lovely. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.